Thank you, Axel. In fact, the question was not um, any choice like you had. You can do whatever you want. Um, and I had to defend the position of anti-GVR antibodies. That's like a little bit like some of the elections these last, day, uh, last days that are pre-planned a little bit. So uh, the mm -hmm. choice and the debate should be BEF versus EGVR antibodies. That should be the real choice. So but what I will do is take you through some arguments and some of the role and the data of the EGFR antibodies and how we can use that and in the armamentarium of the different drugs that we do have the different cytotoxics, the different targeted agents uh, in colorectal cancer. And just for the sake of this debate, um, in the evolution, in a few slides, uh, we started with looking at the role of EGFR antibodies in the first line with the CRYSTAL study several years ago, Volfiri plus or minus cetuximab, where in the non-enriched population, and we are, but we are enriching the population now with KRAS, RAS, and sightedness. Um, in the non-enriched population, there was a significant benefit, but this benefit was, everybody said, so what? Uh, clinically not relevant. Then we did the KRAS testing, and that's KRAS testing, as um, is still in some countries in the label, is the exon 2 KRAS testing. Today, we do the full RAS testing, which is KRAS, exon 2, 3, 4, plus NRAS, uh, exon 2, 3, 4, and that should be done in all patients. Uh, so this full RAS testing. And this, with this full RAS testing, we see an evolution. This is the data for the KRAS testing, exon 2, um, where you can see uh, that with full free plus or minus cetuximab, the hazard ratio went down to 0.79 um, with 3.5 months median survival benefit for adding cetuximab to Folfury. And then you see the next step was a full RAS testing. Then you have to look at the lower curve with the full RAS testing. The hazard ratio goes down to 0.69 with the eight months median survival difference with just this molecular selection. And remember, no testing. Um, very limited difference uh, with RAS testing, hazard ratio 0.69, um, and uh, eight months uh, difference. And that were the data that we knew. And that's in fact shown in this. But you can see that on the left side, in orange and in brown, that are the patients with the RAS wild type tumors, not all do benefit. And therefore, we are looking further in trying to fine tune to really find out which are the patients that do benefit most from the EGFR antibodies. Uh, and then you can go in some molecular markers, the ligands, uh, whatever, uh, some other molecular markers, they are not all validated. Or you can look in the surrogate of a complex molecular signature, the sidedness, and uh, that's wh what's about in this story. And in the setting, in the decision of how we treat a patient, we have uh, in the ESMO consensus, and Axel was part of that, so Axel is also responsible for what I will show <laughs> here uh, in this, um, he was a co-author of this uh, manuscript uh, um, in this situation. Um, we, we put the patients in two groups regarding looking at the goal. The as in group two were the patients with asymptomatic disease, metastatic disease, asymptomatic disease, no candidates for surgery, no impending clinical threat, and there the treatment options may be different compared to group one. Group one are the patients where we really want to achieve a response, a shrinkage of the tumor of the metastasis, because either we can convert the metastasis from not resectable to resectable. You know that you can cure some of the patients if you resect them uh, after <laughs> conversion. Or also in group one are the patients with impending clinical threat, a lot of symptoms where we really want to shrink the tumor and the metastasis in order to avoid that they become too symptomatic. And that's reflected in the guidelines here. And that's the guidelines as, and the consensus paper as, they, as it was published um, um, in last fall, last August uh, 2006, or July, August 2016. Before the data of the sightedness uh, were, let's say, before we were aware so much of the data of sightedness. We had seen some curves, Axel had showed you the curve of the fire tree, but nobody was paying too much attention for clinical practice until last fall, last ESMO meeting um, in Copenhagen. And in fact, in this consensus paper, we said that looking at the goal, tumor shrinkage on the left and disease control on the right, uh, 
You then have to look at the molecular profile of the tumor, RAS wild type, RAS mutant, or BRAF mutant, and then you can come up with a preferred option or a second choice uh, if the prefer preferred option is not, um, is not possible for one or another reason. And in this algorithm, we said that uh, for patients with a cytoreduction shrinkage with a RAS wild type tumor, as you can see on the left uh, of the slide, chemotherapy plus anti-GVR antibodies were the preferred choice. And Axel co-signed that uh, also, so that was clear. For patients with uh, disease control, with the molecular profile, RAS wild type, there the choice goes in two directions, two options, chemotherapy doublet plus a biological agent, and that can be either an anti-GVR antibody or pepecismab. And then came the story of the sightedness. Uh, you will hear more about molecular biology later on by Scott, I believe, uh, um, uh, in one of the next talks, so I will uh, be very fast on that. Sightedness, left, right, for those who are less into the data, usually the split is at the splenic flexure, and that goes back to the embryology. There are some molecular data, molecular markers that are clearly different in right-sided versus left-sided that was seen in different studies. That was seen also, for instance, in the stage two, three, uh, PETAC-3 study where we uh, uh, have shown that, uh, but there are many more data and that will be uh, explained more in detail by, uh, by Scott. And even in the consensus molecular subtypes, uh, the CMS, the um, uh, subtypes that we speak a lot about that was published um, at the end of 2015, even in these different subtypes, left-sided and right-sided, there was not an equal distribution there are some differences also in the CMS types. So just underscoring and helping us to, to state uh, that cytoness is just a surrogate for a complex molecular pattern. Let's then look in a few slides at the data that we do have on cytoness. The crystal study, Axel showed you already uh, uh, some aspects on that. The crystal was full free plus or minus cytoxamab in the first line. What is clear is that there is a prognostic role. Patients with a left-sided tumor had a much better prognosis than right-sided tumors. That was clear. But looking then at, um, and that's shown here, but then looking further at the predictive role, if you look here, patients with a left-sided tumor, when treated with fall free alone, the progression-free survival was 8.9 months, with fall free cetuximab was 12 months. The survival was, went up from 21.7 to 28.7 months in left-sided tumors. So there was a clear, important benefit in left-sided tumors when cetuximab was added uh, to, um, to chemotherapy compared to chemotherapy alone. In right-sided tumors, the, two, the lower column, the lower row, you can't see that clear difference um, in this study. And that's shown on the same, uh, in the same way, that's the same data, left-sided tumors, a benefit for adding cetuximab to Folfury, while this was not the case in the crystal study in right-sided tumors, as you can see. And that's for the survival, same message. So a survival benefit in left-sided for adding an EGFR antibody, not in the right side. That does not answer, of course, the question on cetuximab uh, versus uh, bevacizumab. Um, and that came, and that was further published um, in the JAMA Oncology, last October, I believe, um, we had a paper where we had a combined data set of crystal and FIRE3. FIRE3 is a German-Austrian study, first line, where patients were randomized between Folfiri, cetuximab versus Folfiri, pevacizumab, all RAS wild type patients. And looking at, you have to look at the arrows, and the right blue arrow is for the FIRE3 study, if you look at the numbers, what was clear, and digging into the data, and I will be fast on that, digging into the data, sightedness was clearly prognostic, right-sided tumors had a worse prognosis, but then on top of that, left-sided tumors, they had more benefit from cetuximab than they had from uh, bevacizumab. And indeed, if you look at the numbers, the survival for left-sided tumors was clearly higher or longer uh, compared to right-sided tumors, uh, uh, sorry, the survival is clearly longer for left-sided tumors when patients were treated with Folfiri cetuximab compared to uh, patients who were treated with Folfiri pevacizumab. So in left-sided tumors, there was a clearly better survival, better outcome uh, in this situation. 
You could say that our European data, the, the, water, uh, the, 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 the ocean is between the two. Let's look at the US data, the CLGB study, which was a different study, which was chemo plus cetuximab versus chemo plus bevacizumab. This is for all groups, left and right, bevacizumab, cetuximab. But if we focus here today on the left side, as was the title of the debate, data from the US also showed that left-sided tumors, the survival was better um, when left-sided tumors were treated um, with uh, fulfir, chemo, often fulfox, sometimes fulfiry, but with chemo plus cetuximab versus chemo plus bevacizumab. 32 months to, uh, versus 39 months uh, with a hazard rate of 0.77, so 23% benefit um, um, in this regard. For a left-sided tumor, American patient um, um, uh, treated with uh, cetuximab versus uh, bevacizumab in this setting. We did moreover, and I will end with, uh, with a meta-analysis that we did, we did a meta-analysis, and that's now submitted to a journal, a meta-analysis um, looking at the data of all trials, uh, because you can say you've shown me the crystal, the fire tree, the CLGB. This is a meta-analysis including these three data sets, but also including the different trials that, uh, that, uh, that are available with Panitumab, the peak, the prime uh, study. And in total, and I have to acknowledge this is a retrospective analysis, but in all studies it goes in the same direction. In the meta-analysis, including more than 2,000 patients, what is clear is that there is a prognostic role. There is no doubt any, anymore about that. Right-sided tumors, patients with a right-sided tumor have a worse prognosis than patients with a left-sided tumor, regardless of what you do. And that's what you can see here, the hazard rates of 2.03, uh, which is a striking difference. The important aspect is to look then into the predictive effect. That's uh, the debate here. And that's, again, the slide I've shown you. Um, and that's the same as what we published uh, seven, eight months ago, um, myself and, and Axel and some others, uh, where we said that at that moment, and that was before the story of the sightedness, uh, all wild type patients, um, um, if cyto reduction is the goal, there was a consensus that the doublet plus an anti-G4 antibody is the best. If disease stabilization in wild type patients, uh, a doublet plus an EG4 antibody or a doublet plus bevacizumab were the options in this. If you take that further with the data of this meta-analysis and these different data on sightedness, and that's again uh, the data of the meta-analysis that is now submitted for publication. Um, I mentioned to you already that in this meta-analysis there was a clearly prognostic effect, but there is also a clearly predictive effect. Uh, predictive effect. Looking at the left-sided tumors, and you have to look at the bottom, I can't read the numbers from here, but you have to look at the bottom of the slide um, um, there. Uh, left-sided tumors, they clearly have a benefit um, uh, for a better outcome for progression-free survival on the left or for overall survival when they are treated with cetuximab or panitumab uh, compared to bevacizumab. That's clear. Uh, you can see there was a clear significant uh, difference, uh, a clear striking hazard ratio, and a low p-value uh, looking at these different data sets um, in this situation. For response, it's less clear, but the two relevant endpoints are, were the other ones uh, over there. And if we combine the data of the left-sided tumors, uh, chemo plus an EGFR antibody plus versus chemo or chemo plus bevacizumab, there was a hazard rate of 0.75. In the studies really looking at the question, EGFR antibody versus bevacizumab, in the German study, the FIRE-3, the hazard rate was 0.7 in favor of the EGFR antibody. In the US study, the CLGB study, there was also clearly a significant benefit um, in this uh, situation with the hazard ratio of 0.79. And that was for Keras wild type. That was not yet for the RAS wild type. So there is, this is an evolving concept. If you look at the, then the preferred choices for left-sided primary tumors, cytoreduction, if cytoreduction is the goal, all wild type, it remains a doublet plus an EGFR antibody. If disease stabilization is the goal, the data 
of this meta-analysis now trend to put, to put doublet plus EGFR antibody in ahead of doublet plus bevacizumab. Because you can't deny that if patients are living longer, and that's for the sake of the debate here clearly, um, and of course it has to be discussed always, this toxicity and what Axel has shown is of course the patient with most pronounced toxicity. Not all patients have that toxicity. You know that and if you've experienced, you can manage that in some patients. But looking at the data, that are the data um, uh, that tell us that clearly the doublet plus an EGFR antibody um, has a better outcome in this situation. That's not true for right-sided tumors. Uh, this story is only uh, left-sided. In right-sided tumors, they do not benefit from the EGFR antibodies. Uh, we have seen that in the different data sets, um, uh, and that's here. And that's, in fact, the conclusion slide, as it was shown at the ESMO uh, Special Symposium, and as it will be in the manuscript that is submitted, uh, uh, saying that, again, to summarize, right-sidedness uh, uh, is a surrogate for complex molecular signature, so we will not stay there with the sidedness. Uh, 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 but sidedness is clearly prognostic. Left-sided tumors have a better prognosis than right-sided tumors. Looking at the predictive effect, if you look just at the hard numbers, PFS and OS was always better for in the right side for chemo or chemo plus BEV versus chemo plus an EGFR antibody. Response rate um, was different in right-sided tumors. Right-sided tumors had a higher response uh, when treated with uh, chemo plus an EGFR antibody versus chemo or chemo plus BEV. But for the sake of the debate, left side, there was a consistent in all studies, in all analysis, in the meat analysis, consistent benefit, PFS, OS, response rate for chemo plus an EGFR antibody versus chemo or chemo plus bevacizumab um, in this situation. In the future, we should stratify, of course, uh, patients. They are different left-sided and right-sided, and we should stratify them for different trials. Thank you.